Okay, well, if you see that whole shelf tippy tumble down, <laughs> it was nice seeing you. Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. A couple of things I want to mention before we get started into the video. Number one, if you're new-ish here and this setup looks a little bit funky, trust me, it looks funky to both of us. Um, I'm in the process of going through and rearranging my room and like organizing my makeup. It's going to be a whole new setup for that. And so it's kind of caused this entire room to be in a bit of chaos. So I'm, I'm, I'm working through the situation best I can, but unfortunately during this time, my filming is going to be a little off. So keep that in mind. That's why there's this random box over here instead of my cute little candle. I know that some people could literally give negative seven shits about it and that's totally fine. Um, but I know some people really like, you know, the aesthetic feel that a nice clean room and clean surroundings give off. And, uh, that's just, that's just not the vibe of this room right now. This is, this is chaotic, hectic, and everything in between. So that's thing number one. Number two I want to mention is if you do hear like a slight buzzing or a humming in the background at certain parts of this video, that is the air conditioner because, oh my God, I'm having hot flashes from the pits of hell. So, um, if you just hear that, I apologize. You're gonna have to kind of mm, scooch past it because your girl is just gonna sweat to death. And I really, I would rather try to avoid that. Now that those two things are out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about today's video because I have been waiting. Ooh, have I been waiting for this video? Because y'all know I wanted to play around with these Fenty cream blushes and the cream bronzer since she teased them over on Trend Mood like four weeks, something like that ago. I, when I tell you the level of excitement that I have for these products is a little ridiculous. So I, I wanted to, you know, obviously do a video. I want to play around with them, but I didn't want to just sit down and like dedicate an entire video to just going through that. I kind of feel like you know, I want to spice it up a little bit more since how I typically do full face new makeup and this and that. So I thought for today, what I would do is to kind of, you know, add to the video, make it a little bit more fun and, and incorporate some more stuff just to give you a little bit of a teaser, a little bit of a brief run through, if you will. Um, not only are we going to be talking about the new Fenty stuff, the, again, cream blushes, cream bronzer. I believe I picked up I want to say maybe four shades of the blush, so I'm very excited about that. But I also picked up a couple new things from Hourglass. They came out with a setting spray and an eye primer, so I thought we would test those out. I also picked up this palette. This is from Zodiac Cosmetics, who I've never tested. They are a smaller indie brand, and they came out with these astrology palettes, and obviously y'all know I'm a Libra. And so I picked up the Libra palette right here, which we will talk about. Then in addition, I have a couple of things that were sent to me from Benefit we're going to be talking about. They're new um, Georgia blush right here. A couple different shades of brow products, which, you know, you guys have seen me use their brow stuff a thousand times, but I'm going to keep playing around with it, seeing what profile I like and that sort of thing. So those were sent to me and I'm going to be using some stuff from BoxyCharm, which obviously I do pay for, but just to let you guys know, it's from BoxyCharm. And then the last part that I am so excited about, which you guys know how much I love sponges and I love using them to apply, but I have not yet talked on camera or used these um, Dose of Color sponges since they came out with all of these new profiles and they had a huge huge half off sale on their website like maybe two or three weeks ago and what I did is I actually stocked up on a bunch of my makeup sponges because I love having sponges in stock and I love the dose of color sponge it's a really really great consistency and so I thought for today it would be cool to take and I already have all four of them wet and we're gonna look at all the different profiles see you know are they good do I like them for this that the other so that's pretty much the gist of it I'm gonna go ahead put my hair back and zoom you guys in and let's get started all right, so we're good. We're zoomed in and I just went ahead and I primed off of camera because I'm not using anything new today. I just went in with the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas here. And I want to say I've been testing this out now for about two-ish weeks, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But I, so far, I'm actually liking it and I'm going to work on an update video for you guys so you can stay tuned for that. And then for foundation, I also don't have anything new, which isn't really surprising because it's not the point of today's video. But I still wanted to play around with something new. So I'm going to be taking my Stay Naked foundation which obviously isn't new. I've used this several times and I'm going to be taking this in the shade 11 NN and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of these. These are the iconic London illuminator drops and I just got these. I guess the shade is original so it's the original shade and I just got these in a boxy charm. These drops are absolutely beautiful. Like, look at that. Oh my God, these are so good. Um, but as far as the color itself goes, I can't really use it over top of my makeup because it's just a freckle too dark for me. And honestly, the consistency, I don't know if it's something that would work with my texture, like over top of other products. So in the past, you know, years and years ago, when I used to use these all the time, I really loved to mix them in with my foundation. It just gives a beautiful, like healthy glow to the skin. And I thought there wouldn't be a better time to do that than with this Stay Naked foundation, because this foundation all by itself does now 
naturally have more of like a skin-like kind of finish. And mixing it with these drops, I think it'll kind of take it from natural skin-like and just kind of boost it up in the glowy radiance department. So I took about three pumps of the foundation and I'm gonna take let's say two drops of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply that with this beefy guy from Dose of Colors. This is the Seamless Beauty Sponge in the pen point style. And uh, I really love this. I think it's like a good handle on it to like beat that fatter end all over your face. So I'm gonna go ahead here, scoop it up and apply. I'll probably have to make up a little bit more of the solution just be the solution, the mixture. Because I have noticed that when I apply it with a sponge, um, especially a sponge that's like nice and squishy like this one. It's such a thin foundation consistency that it does absorb into the sponge fairly quickly. Okay, so I just got that all over the face and we're gonna talk about it in one second, but I wanna mention if the lighting today looks a little weird, I am filming this a little bit later than I normally do. So you can kind of see on camera, this side has a lot more light exposed than this side. Obviously I can't have any influence over the lighting outside or that kind of thing. And I don't have the setup to control everything, but I just wanted to let you guys know just in case case, you know, on camera it looks a little off or maybe one product looks different on this side than it does over here, that sort of thing. As far as the foundation goes, it did apply very nicely just like it normally does. I am noticing that like up and on my nose right here and over some of my more porous areas, it is settling differently than it normally does, which is very interesting. Um, it's, it's kind of like if you've ever had texture or anything like that and you use an illuminator or a highlighter, whatever, how sometimes it can almost like emphasize your texture or maybe sit weird on texture. I can almost tell that this is doing that same type of thing just in my foundation because I've never had this specific foundation like repel off of my nose or, or get kind of funny over my over my like high points texture whatever so just something to note if you go to mix it in but from here I'm gonna go ahead really quickly and use my hourglass concealer this is in the shade birch and I'm kind of hoping that with this I can you know balance everything out this has quickly become one of my favorite concealers it's so so creamy. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. So I'm just going to take some of this and hit it around the face on different points. And then really quickly before we move in, I'm going to take this same sponge and I'm going to use a little bit of my Fenty powder here. This is in the shade Butter. And I'm going to press that into my under eye when it gets up nice and close. I Yeah, I love that. That's really good. And I'm also going to go ahead and set down around my mouth and my nose, but I'm not gonna set the center of my forehead like I normally do because we're gonna be playing around with that new bronzer today. And I don't wanna take any chances on having something up there that could make it look weird. And from there, it is finally time. We are gonna start playing around with all of the Fenty cream stuff that I picked up. And we're definitely gonna start off with the bronzer because as y'all know, that is the order that I like to do things. So for that, let's go ahead and unveil. I haven't looked at, swatched, or done anything with these yet. So this is, oh, that's so satisfying, okay. This is the shade O2 Butter Biscuit. I'm gonna go ahead really quickly here and swatch this. Ooh, that is so satisfying. Oh wow, and the pigmentation, very even. Ooh, I, oh, I like this color a lot actually. Oh my gosh, and it seriously feels like it's blending like butter. Like it just, it moves so easily on the skin. Look at that, it's so nice. And because this is on the creamier side of things, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it with the uh, the jumbo sponge from Dose of Colors. And more so just because it is so creamy and it feels so emollient to the touch that I wouldn't want to like dig a brush in here because I know that I would destroy it. So I'm just gonna start off by dipping the sponge into the product and we can go ahead and kind of lightly start shaping in the face here just a little bit. That's a beautiful color. And I'm probably gonna work or build from there. That's a really nice shade actually for me. And then I just wanna reiterate, I did go with the second shade out of the collection, um, which is why it's O2 Butta Biscuit. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Butta Biscuit. Uh, but the shade is number two, moral of my story. And that's because shade number one was actually specced as a cool tone brown, which on me would have been uh, more of a contour type shade. And I know that a lot of people do prefer that more contour-esque, you know, cool tone type vibe. I'm I'm just not one of them. Again, I, I really like the, the warmth that I get from a, a warmer kind of shade like this. So that's why I chose it. Obviously, you know, you guys can go in with whichever one you think will work better for you, but I am a big, big fan of this color. I feel like actually, you know what? I think maybe if I move the camera out, maybe I can like adjust the light, hold on. All right, so I went ahead and I left it at about this level. No matter what, it's gonna be a little bit more shadowed on this side. There's just nothing I can do about that. But as far as you know, the rest of it, I think you can kind of glean what's going on. And I'm just taking what's left over here on the sponge and running it 
on the bottom and upper lip, like right on the ledge right there. It just gives a little bit of added contour for later on. Makes my lips look a little bit pouty, which I desperately need because y'all know I got these crinkled up little lips. And uh, like, I like to just add a little flavor when I can. All right, so I just went ahead and I unboxed all of the little cream blushes here. And the first thing that I want to ask is why the hell are these so small? Like, I actually just went back and double checked the website to make sure that I didn't purchase like the teeny tiny version because did anybody else expect this to be like <laughs> the same ish size as this one? Maybe it's just me that this is kind of like hitting in a weird way. I'm not sure, but I really thought they were the same size and I don't know if it's just like, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just like, it's what I've come to expect, but I was thinking back in my head, like even ColourPop, when they came out with their blush sticks right here, they also came out with highlight sticks at the same time and like they were the same. So maybe it's just in my head, like I'm kind of comparing it to this because don't get me wrong, like they're not the same price or anything. The, the cream blushes are $20 and the cream bronzers are $32. So you do get more product with the bronzers, but for $12 more, again, those are 20, these are 32. Um, there's, there's more than double the amount of product in here. So I feel like if the, the blushes are gonna be this small, then they definitely should have been less money. And I'm kind of thinking for this size, shouldn't it be right around $15, $16 to kind of be the same? I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. You guys can let me know down below. I just feel like it's really kind of hitting me like a whirlwind situation, but that could just be me. So I'm gonna move on from there. You guys can leave me your thoughts in the comments. And uh, let's go ahead and start off by swatching the shades that I picked up. I grabbed four different shades. This first one here is Strawberry drip. Oh, wow. These are nice and creamy. And here is that shade. I really like that. Again, it's strawberry drip. It's a nice, like brighter pink, which I think is really impactful. And I think if you were going for like a really nice poppy cheek color, this would really stand its own against other makeup. So next up we have the shade Rose Latte, which is like a, a you know, a slightly rosy undertone kind of nude brown type color. That is beautiful. That's totally my jam right there. And I love it because they gave it that kind of rose undertone. I think it really works and it'll look really good on a ton of skin tones, which is really nice. Ooh, this one looks like it has a little bit of something to it. This is Cool Berry. And it has like a little bit, almost maybe is it like shimmer in there or something? It just has a little bit of like reflect to it. That's beautiful. That and that pink one mixed together would be so beautiful if you wanted like a really bold color. That's beautiful. Now I did try to hit multiple like areas I feel like for blush. So for those of you that are looking at that purple on your like page, <laughs> bring it back, bring it back to like my level. Girl, I got you. I picked up the shade O2 Petal Poppin, which first of all, that name is fantastic. But I picked this up because it was a really nice like neutral toned light pink and a lot of people when they want cream products they really want like that fresh face fresh skin and I felt like this would be a really nice fresh light option for those of you that you know sit more so in that camp and it's so beautiful so you can definitely see I picked up more of a wide array of colors which again I did so that way we could kind of look at them test them out and see what we think also let's go ahead and wipe these off before I wear them because the last time that I left cream blushes on it was in the Milani video that I just put up. I'll link it up here. And I had them on here for like 12 seconds. Next thing I know, they're all over my shirt. They're on my chair. And I'm just like, hmm, how does this happen so quickly? So now I just do my best to wipe off swatches immediately. But in going through and picking out one of these blushes, I kind of think it makes more sense, especially if I'm wanting to test out as much as I can to start lighter and then I can build up if I want to. So I'm going to grab the shade O2 Petal Poppin, which again, it's, it's a much lighter toned pink. And I'm, oh, actually I can grab a different sponge. Ooh, I get to grab a different sponge. Y'all know I love sponges, okay? I love sponges. It's just who I am. And I think for this product, the original Dose of Colors um, sponge would be a really good option. It, I haven't used it before, so it's completely clean, but I just want to show you a size comparison if you haven't seen them next to each other. This is the original. This is the jumbo, uh, but I think this one would be perfect for diving into the little container here. So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to just, you know, pick out some color. Ooh, that's pretty. That consistency is very nice. So it goes on seamlessly. It builds up really nice. And I love that tone. It's a very, very natural flush color, which I like a lot actually. And you know what? On the face, I feel like it even has a little bit more impact than it did when I swatched it. I don't know if that's just me, but I feel like it has a little something to it. 
Like, I, I really like that tone. This would be a very easy, breezy, like, throw it on and go kind of cream shade, I feel like. Especially if you're near um, my skin tone, like, extra pasty with a side of, I don't know, milk. Um, I, I think it would work really nicely for just, like, an easy kind of throw on cream type shade where it's not going too much in one direction. Uh, but I think on the other side, I want to play with, well, actually, I better take the other light shade so we can kind of compare the two pinks. So just going in, we just use this lighter pink right here, a little bit more natural. Now we're going to go in with the brighter tone and see if this is any different. So I'm going to take a different spot on the sponge and grab, pick up a little product here. And then we're going to pop this one right over here. And I just want to see when it transfers. Oh yeah, it definitely transfers to the skin and looks like a lot more, like you can see, look at how much more popped that side is. Like it's a lot brighter. I don't know if it shows up on camera like it does in real life, but this side over here is like, <laughs> so wow. Like it's got some definite tone to it, which is nice. I think it's good to see the difference, but just so you guys know if you're kind of, you know, back and forth between the two, those are some differences. Now from there, I want to take a little bit of the deeper tone shade. So I'm going to grab Rosa Latte. I'm going to just take, you know, a different spot of the sponge. It doesn't really matter at this point. Point. We're just going to mix them all together anyways. Uh, but I think I'm going to grab that on, hmm, I think I'm this side and I'm just going to, you know, hit a little bit of it. Obviously at this point we are building, so it's something to keep in mind. You know, we're just adding excessive blush here. Um, but I just want to play around with the tones a little bit. Oh, I like that. Okay. I do feel like with this side, the blush that I already had on is kind of accentuating the undertone, like that rosy undertone of this one. So something to keep in mind, but I like it. I do feel like it is a lot more impactful. So if you're going with this one, obviously maybe apply a little bit less. I'm going to go through and, and reshape out the face and make it look a little bit less intense. And then on the other side, let's go ahead and grab 09 Cool Berry because today's going to be the day where I put on four cream blushes and test out a powder blush. Go team. Uh, so I'm going to grab some of this here. Also, again, just on the sponge. Woo All right. Definitely going to need to go a little bit lighter handed. Oh boy, okay, this one does apply quite purple. And I'm really just carefully going through and buffing that color out because obviously it is much more of a purple undertone. Can't speak for staying power or anything like that, but I'm a big fan of how they've applied so far. So there is the cream blush. The cream bronzer situation is worked out. So really quickly, I have to obviously set the rest of my face. So I'm starting off with the center of my forehead and the Fenty powder, just like I did the rest of it. But then to go in and set the rest of my face, I have a new product. I mean, it's not it's not new to the world, but it is new to me. And this is from Urban Decay, and it is their long wear mattifying weightless waterproof setting powder. And this came out, I want to say, it's may maybe it's been a year at this point. I'm not really sure. But I wanted to test it out because I got it at, um, at Ulta during one of their half off or maybe Ulta 121 Days of Beauty or something. And I just, I want to test it out so badly because I'm, oh wow, that color looks very dark. So I'm just going to go in here. This is my Scott Barnes 67. I'm going to dip in and again, lightly just set everything down. And you know what? Even if it makes my skin look a little bit darker, Maybe I can just go in and like brighten it up with some more of that Fenty powder. Why not just keep adding powders until my face cracks apart? I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. We'll find out. And then once I've set my face, I do like to go in and lightly dust over and just kind of re-emphasize my bronzer and my blush. So I don't have new products for that. So I'm going to go in with my Essence Matte Bronzer right here. This is in the shade 01 Natural. This is such a fantastic, fantastic affordable bronzer. I pulled it out like a week ago and I haven't stopped using it since. It's just so good. So now from here, we're going to go ahead and go into blush. And I'm very glad that we're using the new one from Benefit, which I think I mentioned at the beginning, but if I didn't, this was sent to me. I did not purchase it, but this is their new Georgia shade and it has a very light amount of pigmentation to it. You can see that it has like a, like a luminous kind of shimmery type quality and the base pigmentation or the base shade of it isn't very intense. And my original purpose was to obviously pair it with these because these were more intense in color. And I thought it would look good kind of like a topper over a darker shade. I'm just going to take this on a big old fluffy color pop brush that I don't know what it is. And I'm going to just dive in here, pick up some product and lightly kind of just drape it over the cheek. I'm not going to go in too crazy because like I said, it has a shimmer to it. And I think going in, you know, a little bit too much would make it very emphasized. Now, while I do like the way that this looks over top of those other blushes and I think the colors work together, I don't know if this were by itself, if this would be like a product that I would be all on board with just because it's so light. And don't get me wrong, some people really love that. And if that's your thing, maybe you do, you know, like a BB cream, a CC cream, your cheeks are naturally pink. Something like this would just kind of lightly emphasize. This might be the product for you if that's kind of your vibe. But for me, because I do put on so much other stuff, I don't know that I would be able to ever use this as like a standalone 
own product and have it be something that really 100% worked for me. All right, so here's the deal. I feel like we have literally talked about blushes for seven hours at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my Fenty powder and I'm going to start kind of sculpting out the face a little here. Again, this is still in the shade Butter. And I'm just going to add it along the jawline, make sure it kind of gives me that nice little pop. Okay, so I know that this looks a little bit intense. Bear with me and hopefully everything will turn out good. Um, for me though, I'm gonna go in next and do brows, which is definitely something y'all have seen me do a hundred times. But for today, normally I go in with the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit and I wanna use something else. This is their Goof Proof Brow Pencil, which is the one with the thicker end. It has the slant to it. And typically I don't go in with this one just because it is thicker, it's harder for me to control. But I thought, you know, they sent it to me. I want to test it out. And maybe now that I've been able to grow in some of my uh, brows right here, maybe I would feel differently about it. So I'm going to use this. I'm using it in the shade four. I think the thing that I struggle with the most when it comes to this product is that people would prefer this to the Precisely My Brow. Like I just, I, I don't understand. I feel like the Precisely one, it's so, it, it's so precise. You can use it for everything. And yeah, we're definitely gonna have to clean her up, honey. She is thick with 17 Cs. Oh boy. All right, so the brows are done. I went in with the Benefit Gimme Brow. This is in shade five. And I really love shade four for a pencil and shade five together. I think it looks really nice. I've never used that shade before. And I just went ahead and I wiped off all the bake uh, because I could start to feel like like my face really tighten up. And I realized, you know, kind of in that moment that I have done a lot of drying things to my face and I haven't really went in yet at this point and given it any sort of like liquid, you know, setting spray, anything like that. So I think it's a good time to take a little bit of a pause before we go in with eyeshadow. I know this is totally out of order for me, but girls gotta do what a girl's gotta do. So we're gonna start going in and testing out the Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray from Hourglass. Oh my God, this packaging, it is a soft touch package. Oh, Oh, that is, oh, this feels so luxurious. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a little shake here. See what we got going on. Oh. No smell, very soft. Holy cow, can you see that? It's like the softest mist. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a little spray. So I went ahead and I did spray a little bit more liberally with that spray because it is such a fine uh, type of mist that comes out of there. Very similar to the Fenty one that I tested out a couple of weeks ago. This is the What It Do spray and it's very fine mist. Like you can, you can, hold on. You can barely hear this. Like it's that fine of a mist. And the one from Hourglass has a very similar type texture, but I prefer the Hourglass one so far because no matter how much of it you spray, there's no smell and it doesn't overwhelm you. And the one from Fenty does have a spray and I feel like it really builds quickly on itself. So, so far I'm liking that aspect. Again, very fine mist, no smell, which is fantastic. Thank you, Hourglass. But while everything is just settling in, let's go ahead and do a real quick eye look, which of course we're gonna be using this beautiful Libra palette from from Zodiac Cosmetics. I just think the graphic on this is so pretty. It's very inviting and very nice and soft, but it has that little pop on her inner corners. Oh, I just love this so much. So let's go ahead. It looks like it comes here with a full mirror. And these are the shades in the palette. And I think what drew me to this the most is that it really did hit Libra really nicely because it has all of these beautiful neutral shades to it and then just a couple like fun little pops of color. But everything is very uniform, but with an edge. And for me, that's very Libra-esque. So I definitely appreciated the color scheme here, the, the commitment to story, if you will. I really liked that. But the other product that I wanted to test out before we go in with eyeshadow is from Hourglass. This is their new eye primer. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little glob over here. And it looks like it's kind of a, a lighter bone type color when you first apply it, but it does blend out to be almost translucent, I would say. You can barely see it right there. No smell, well, maybe like a light, almost like Play-Doh-y type smell, but very, very light, nothing artificial, which again, I'm a big fan of. It has a really uh, slippery, like dimethicone type feel to it. For somebody like me, because I have more oily lids, this is a bit concerning because it feels so slippery and so slidey. Like I can't, I almost don't feel like I can trust that this is gonna actually stay on my 
friggin' eyeball. Like, I feel like it's just gonna, it's gonna go right away. I think the other thing that I'm not loving about this is that it doesn't have any coverage to it. Like, I'm the type of person, I use concealer because I like it to be, you know, really canceled on my eyelids. I like all the veins and all the everything to go away and just be a beautiful blank canvas. And this is just, it's more of a translucent option, which again, a lot of people love and I've used similar ones in the past. Um, but it's just, it, it's a personal preference thing. So we're gonna be fair. We're gonna see how it works. But so far, you know, I'm, I'm kind of I'm on the fence a little bit. So I think the first thing we're gonna use out of this Libra palette is just gonna be a nice little, you know, set everything down type shade. So for that, we're gonna go with Destiny up here. It's more of a bone colored shade. And for this, we're gonna take a Morphe M452. And you know what, actually guys, that's kind of giving me the coverage on my lid that I would normally get with the concealer. So I'm just gonna take and pop this all over the mobile lid and just set the whole thing down. Now in this palette, as far as deeper shades go, I am a little bit limited. I'm probably gonna stick with Triumph right here. I'm gonna take it on the same brush, which the shades themselves seem to be pretty nice. They've got a good amount of color to them, but there is a fair amount of kick in the pan. So just something to keep in mind. Just gonna take and really work this shade. And because, you know, like I mentioned, I don't have a ton of options, which is fine. You know, it's not nothing against the palette, but for today, I'm just gonna build up this shade, I think a little bit more through the crease. I think I wanna take just a teeny tiny little bit of the shade Desire right here. And I'm gonna kind of work that in. Oh, wow, that, that has some payoff. Can you guys see how much color that has to it? Holy cow. Um, I wanna take just the tiniest amount of that though and work it in with the shade Triumph just to create a little bit more depth. Oh wow, that shade is very rich. Okay, I barely tapped into it and then tapped it off and it is super duper rich. But I really wanna mix that shade in with the uh, that brown shade on the outer V and then lightly just kind of pull what's left over into the crease a little bit. Ooh, okay, all right, I see what we're doing here. I smell what I'm stepping in and I like it. I smell what I'm stepping in and I like it. Very, very demure. Now I'm just gonna go back in with that shade Triumph, just a little bit on the same brush and just lightly blend it and kind of soften the outer edges of that darker purple shade. Okay, so, so far, I really love where we're at with this. And I think what's really gonna pull it together is my glitter glue and a little bit of that very shiny shade right there. I think it's just gonna tie everything. So I'm gonna take some of this just on my finger. Oh no! after I drop it on the floor, <laughs> cute. And I'm just gonna tap that more so over the mobile lid on the inside and then lightly span it out. And then take the shade Faith right here, just on my finger and lightly tap that over top. This actually has a really nice undertone to it. Oh, there's the blue reflect. Okay, that's how this shade ties in with these blues. I couldn't, I couldn't see it at first, but there's like this slight like blue, undertone to it that's really beautiful. I'm gonna take a little bit of this on just a fluffy Morphe, it's a no-name brush. And I'm gonna just kind of fluff it up into the crease a little just to make sure everything is blended. I feel like it has such a beautiful shift to it. I just want it to be really light and kind of all over the place. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of the shade Love. It's kind of like a shimmery, like almost purple magenta type shimmer. And I'm gonna pop that right next to it on the back half of the eye, because I think at this point we're just stacking colors. Ooh, 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 that's, ooh, that's really pretty. Okay, yep, mm-hmm, yep, yep, I like where this is going. And then just blend all of that together with a teeny tiny little hit of that dark purple desire shade, that matte purple. Just a little teeny tiny bit just to blend. Oh, wow, I wanted like a brown neutral eye, but I ended up <laughs> this. How did I, I don't even know how I did this. Don't know, don't care, don't care. Also gonna take that desire shade, that darker purple onto the lower lash line and just kind of pull it up a little bit on to the upper, just kind of help lift that outer V a little bit. You know what I think would look really pretty with this actually is my ColourPop highlight. I know this is totally random, but I'm gonna take this and use it as a brow bone highlight. I just feel like it would match so nicely with like this like bright feel we have. It's gonna be a very strong brow bone highlight, but I think it can, oh yeah, it's really gonna work with that like inner situation we have going on there. Ooh, that's pretty, pretty. Can you see how beautiful that is? Am I like the only one seeing this? I feel like it looks gorgeous. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. Okay, I have to run off of camera super quickly. I'm gonna change my battery and I am going to do this eye because wow, the difference is laughable. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do that and I will be right back to, I don't, I don't even know what's next at this point because I'm just so obsessed with the way this eye look turned out. Oh my God, it looks 
It looks so beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna be right back and we're gonna keep talking. Give me a second. All right, so hello, beautiful people. I am back and as you can tell, I went ahead and I finished up the rest of my face, which I'll go ahead and I'll get into the details and kind of what happened here in a second. But I realized after I went off of camera to finish up that eye that I didn't have anything else that was like specifically new that I, I needed to talk about that you guys would be super interested in. And in the interest of, you know, just kind of moving the video along, I figured I would go ahead, finish everything up and then kind of run through not only my thoughts about what we talked about, but also kind of what I feel about the other stuff I tested out. So let me go ahead really quickly and I'm going to throw up the up close for you guys. So the first thing I want to get into, we're going to talk about the skin and how that's looking, which I, I do think throughout this entire process, it's been very hit or miss for me as far as, you know, if it looked good or not. And I largely think it just has something to do with those iconic London drops. So for me, I don't know if I'd be able to mix them in. Maybe it's a mixture with the foundation, uh, but there, there is something funky going on there because with this foundation specifically, I'm very familiar with it and normally my skin doesn't have this hard of a time so that's something that I will have to play around with. But overall it does look pretty nice so far like I'm happy with it kind of coming full circle and that kind of segues me over into the review of, of things I've already touched because I feel like that has a lot to do with this Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray from Hourglass because I feel like before I went in with this I did I was noticing like a lot more texture and a lot more kind of like surface like scrunchiness if you will like it just had a lot of like weird stuff going on but I I feel like there is an aspect to this that even though it's not super wet and it's not super hydrating, it did go in and just very lightly kind of like veil out and smooth things down. And then along those same lines, while we're still talking about Hourglass, I want to touch on this eye primer because obviously I haven't like wear tested it all day or anything, but for a base that's more on the translucent side, given the slip and all of that, this did set down and give me a very nice blendable, slightly tacky base that I really wasn't expecting. Like I, I fully kind of anticipated, not not to be mean or nothing, but after I kind of felt the texture, I was very like uh, going into it, but it actually worked very well and everything blended very nicely. And that's coming, you know, from an eyeshadow palette. Like I've never used this brand or this shadow palette before. And normally I wouldn't pair two new products together like that, but they both went on very nicely. The pigmentation and everything worked beautifully. And I think both products are very nice, you know, eyeshadow palette and that. But I, I think of the two, I was more so surprised from Hourglass just because I didn't think it would work as well as it did. Moving on from there to kind of touch on a couple of other things that are on my face, things that don't really matter, but I want to mention um, that were just out of my boxy charm. I did go in and test out the Wander Beauty Mile High Club Volume and Length Mascara, and this, it, it was nice. Like, it, it, I think it worked okay. For me, it's more of a lower lash line mascara. It's very defining for your lashes, but it doesn't add, like, a lot of bulk in that that real, um, makes them look, like, nice and thick. It, does, it doesn't really give me, like, the voluminous aspect that I like to have because I don't go in with false lashes. So for me, this it's not a flop, but it's more of a lower lash line type product because again, the definition and the lengthening aspect is very nice, but I built it up three coats deep and I just couldn't get it to give me much volume. So it's good, but ultimately for the top lash line, I did go in and layer up some of my ABH mascara over top of it. That is everything. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Did, did you like this video? Were you cool with it? Is there anything you wanna see? Of course, you know, you can leave anything you wanna say, whether it's about this, something else that's going on in life, whatever, leave it down below. If you haven't checked me out yet on Instagram and on Twitter, of course, both of those will be linked down in the description. If you haven't subscribed here, of course, you can do that as well. I put up new videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They go up right around 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan, so adjust that for wherever you live. You guys, I think that that's everything. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Paige, if you clean your room, this wouldn't be a problem now, would it? <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Okay. Wow. Okay, well, if you see that whole shelf tippy tumble down, <laughs> it was nice seeing you. So, for today's video, I am so freaking. Okay. That's the level of excited, okay? <laughs> Take notes. But to add just a couple more to this and make it more of a new ish full face or partially full face of makeup. <laughs> of makeup. <laughs> well, hello, beautiful people. My <laughs> Did I just make fun of myself? <laughs> Today's the day we're gonna do it. We're gonna dive our little fingers in and we're gonna get started. And okay, my nose has itched this whole time. Okay, I couldn't focus because my nose itched. Anybody else? Just me?